Hey guys, Hybrid Toy Reviews here, and today I want to review the Star Wars The Black Series Force Unleashed Starkiller and Stormtroopers PulseCon exclusive set. Wow, that's a mouthful. This is a really cool figure pack. It comes with Starkiller, two Stormtroopers, and a whole slew of accessories and swappable parts and pieces. It's got a big price tag. It's $110. So let's go ahead and get into the review, see if you actually get a good value for your money. Spoiler alert, I think it's pretty fair. But let's go ahead and watch and see what comes in the box. All right, as always, we're going to start by taking a look at the packaging. But before we even get there, if you want to add a Black Series figure to your collection, I am giving away this old Master Darth Maul gaming greats when we hit 1,500 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. Anyway, let's get into this. So the packaging here is very unique. It is a convention exclusive, so of course you're going to get something special here. So the cover of this box recreates the cover art from the video game very well, but it's not actually the picture from the cover art. It actually took me to like a double take to look at this because it's actually the action figures. You can see like the joints, you know, on the figures. It's really cool. It's been recreated very well and I love it. So you have your Force Unleashed logo there with Starkiller with the blast effects blowing the Stormtroopers back with Force Lightning. He is, is for ages four and up from Hasbro. Warning, choking hazard, and fantasy scene because the stormtroopers can't actually float on their own. The top of the box has nothing going on. Around back just has the same art. Sides of the box, are, it's a slip cover, so you can actually see the digital render of Starkiller and all of his accessories and the stormtrooper down below. And then this end gives you a bio about Starkiller and stormtroopers with a Black Series logo and Force Unleashed logo. Underneath is all black except for a barcode slipping the slip cover off you see star killer in there just looking awesome there's like a blue swirly background with the force and or with the black series logo underneath you have disney and hasbro in here again these sides swivel open revealing the stormtroopers to either side i love how they just give you stormtroopers basically as accessories just as you know fodder for star killer to hit i mean it's awesome and then spinning this around you do get the actual image from the cover art so this is not the uh yeah it says original artwork down there so this is like the actual cover photo it's not the action figure photography version that is awesome um so yeah it's really unique packaging i gotta say i'm gonna go ahead and get everything out of this package though let's take a look at what we get here spoiler alert it's a lot all right, so as always, we're going to start by taking a look at the accessories, and yes, that's why I have the Stormtroopers out. Let's be fair, you didn't buy this set for the Stormtroopers. You bought this set for the Starkiller, and these Stormtroopers are only here to be taken out by your Starkiller. They are, I mean, this is not the best way to army build Stormtroopers. So, both Stormtroopers come with the Stormtrooper Blaster. Now this... I don't have the 40th Return of the Jedi Stormtroopers. I don't know if that one comes with this blaster. This is the first time in person that I have seen the new Stormtrooper body without this blaster with the flashlight on the side of it. So that's pretty cool. Something else I will say is that these Stormtroopers are basically identical to now this is like the Mandalorian Stormtrooper. Except the only difference I've found is in the Mandalorian, like the teeth in the mouth are painted gray. These are silver. So I, I, I do feel that that is perhaps a little bit more of a film accurate detail, whereas the uh, Mandalorian ones are more, you know, TV costume accurate. So there you go. Now, like I said, otherwise, you know what you're getting here. You have a Black Series Stormtrooper, but that blaster may be new. So to give you the briefest rundown on articulation before getting into Starkiller, non-removable helmet, double barbell neck, allows Trooper to look that far up, that far down, rotate, pivot, Arms come out to a T-pose where there's a butterfly joint. Can go 360 at the shoulder. The shoulder pad is on that ring on a peg, so it goes with it. Single-jointed elbows go past 90 and rotate. 360 at the wrist with the left one hinging in and out. Right one hinging up and down. Mid-torso ball joint hidden under that torso armor overlay. Allows it to crunch that far forward, that far back. Rotate, pivot. Legs can come out that far. There's an upper thigh swivel hidden under the armor sculpt, which is cool. Single-jointed knees go a little past 90 and rotate. Its feet can point basically straight down, really far forward, and there's a forward-facing pin for rocker, allowing you to get this guy into some pretty decently wide stances with both feet flat on the ground. However, I think the best poses for these two are laying on the ground dead with a Starkiller between them. That's why they're here. Starkiller needed cannon fodder. 
Here's Starkiller with all of his accessories laid out, and he comes with a lot. He comes with more than any deluxe or build-up pack has in the line. There's just a lot of stuff here, just to give you a brief zoom out, just to show. I mean, this is a pretty loaded review station, not including the troopers and their blasters. So, uh, I guess let's go ahead and start running through some of the swappable pieces. So, this is the head that Starkiller has on out of the box. And I will say this looks pretty good. It has a pretty decent Sam Witwer likeness. Um, he has the buzz cut going on. Not really sure about the fade in the hair. I kind of wish it was just like a consistent, you know, like black, you know, dark gray. It kind of fades to tan in the front. Not sure on that. I'm not saying it's inaccurate. It's been a minute since I've played the game. I just don't remember that. Not sure that I like that. But uh, it looks pretty good. I'm digging it. Anyway, uh, here he is with a head swap. And there he is with like a battle screaming face. I gotta say, I'm seeing the likeness a lot less in this one. And it's the same thing going on with like the hair fade in the front. And I just, I don't know. He also goes very square chinned. Like it like basically perfectly flats off. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not really seeing the likeness on this as much. I gotta say, it's just not doing it for me. Let's go ahead and swap it again. And this one... I don't even really know what they're going for. Like, is it like a dark side grimace? Is, is he smiling? Is he in pain, angry? Like, I don't know. I'm I'm not really liking this head sculpt very much. I gotta say, we get three heads. Only one of them is good. Yeah, that first one's good. So let's go ahead and get that put back on. On the plus side, they do say there's a gaming great single pack coming somewhere. Obviously not announced yet, but Yak has a pretty good rumor on that. Let's be fair, it's not going to come with all these accessories. It'll probably just come with this head, and this is the good head, so I hope that's the head that they choose to bring along with it. From there, let's go ahead and look at our swappable hands. So uh, right out of the box, this is what he comes with. He comes with these kind of open hands. You know, this one's kind of like a good force push, hinges back, and he's wearing... He's so got those, like, hand wraps going on. They look pretty nice. This one here could be, like, a forced choke. It could be used to grab accessories. This one's really open. This is definitely, like, a push or something. So I do like these hands. Let's go ahead and swap them out. These hands are pretty cool. They're very splayed finger force hands, and so I'm really liking the look of these. These would be good for some really dynamic force pushes. And then there's more sets. From there he has these hands, which are definitely the dedicated holding things hand. This right hand here is like, would only look good holding a lightsaber. It has a vertical hinge, which is a good move. This hand also has a vertical hinge. It has a little bit of a trigger finger going on, a little bit slightly open, like it's force affecting, like maybe he's doing a push with a saber in hand. So I do really like that effect. Then he has this hand, which is like a force push effect. So it's a splayed open left hand with this energy blast coming out of it that kind of funnels out. And um, I'm not really digging this one as much, I gotta say. Like, I I applaud them for trying something, but I'm just not not vibing with this one as much. It was a, uh, it was an ambitious attempt doing force effects. The thing is, is like, you know, like, you don't see the force in the movies and the video games. Sometimes you see a little, like, air ripple. I feel like this is too much. I feel like this is just too big and gaudy a thing for the thing it's trying to represent. But again, I mean, good job on Hasbro for trying something different, just not an accessory I'm going to use. And then there's one final set of hands. The lightning hands. So these hands are splayed fingers basically straight out, and he has this nice dark blue effect coming out of them. Now the fingers are painted, but obviously the hands are in that transparent blue, so the fingertips kind of bleed into the effect just a little bit. Something else is... He's very front-heavy with all this rubber going on, but that is why, not exclusively why, but you do get this really cool effect. Now, this really represents his force repulse when he does, like, that energy blast, but if you look here in the center, there are three foot tabs, so you can actually peg him in, peg his heel into a tab, and that will, of course, give him a little bit more of a base to work with for the lightning effects, so... That definitely helps out with this sort of effect. Now, if you have a little more time and you're not reviewing like I am right now, you would probably get him into an even better pose. Let's go ahead and get him off of here, though. And take a look at the blast effect just one more time, the repulse effect. So the base is in a clear, maybe has just a tint of blue plat hint to it. Um, and then all of these blasts, there's three different kind of rubber pieces that peg in. You see there's like a series of rectangular pegs around but it does make a really nice, you know, like, ground slam, force repulse effect. 
Um, it's definitely a lot of real estate on the shelf. I don't know that this is going to make it to the shelf, but it is a very well represented blast effect. So from here, we get into the lightsaber, and you actually get some really cool features with the lightsaber. Just look at the hilt. It's in a very nice silver paint. Obviously, the saber in game has some grass flex, you know, lightsaber inspiration. Looks really cool. You have black for the button in the back, and then the stripe going down the back of the top. You have your black, uh, your black rods, you know, down at the base for the grip. Kind of flat pommel with a ring carved into it. And then you have the open front of the saber, and just a little touch of red paint in there to represent the crystal. Now, I will say that the red crystal looks really good. And it's not like a deal breaker, but it looks good when you have the red blade in, you know, I mean, it because of course it matches and the red is actually a very nice shade of red, I will say. Something they've done here that I really like, they brought back from the Count Dooku figure, I think these are modified a little bit, but we're actually getting lightsaber swoosh effects. And I love this kind of thing. I mean, I love this. This is like the you know, like action effect I want. You know, blasts are neat and lightning hands are neat, but swooshes are almost what sold me on this set. And because of course Starkiller has a little bit of a shift in the game, he comes with a blue blade, which is a great shade of blue, looks very nice. However, that's where that red painted crystal ah, kind of conflicts just a little bit. Not the end of the world. When you have him holding it, your you know figure's hand is going to be covering in the red paint anyway. Kind of wish maybe they'd have just thrown in a second hilt. I mean, for the price of the set, they had the budget, but it is what it is. And it's not just a blue blade. There is also a blue swoosh blade, which is excellent. We've had a similar effect with the Count Dooku figure before of a red swoosh, and we've never seen it anywhere else. This is our first time seeing the swoosh effect in blue, and it looks very good. Something else really cool and worth noting with the Star Killer figure is, as you may have seen on the hilt, there is a peg for hanging it on his belt. Now, if you look just at the front of the figure, there's a peg hole on this hip, which works. It holds the saber very well. But if you spin him around back, there's a number of other positions that you can peg this into. You can have it basically at the back center, or a little left of center, or over here. Or over here. I mean, there are five different places that you can hang hilts on this guy. I'm wondering if that means that they're going to maybe be looking into doing, like, the Sith Stalker armor at some point, And maybe they're going to use the same belt piece, and they're going to hang all the different sabers off of it. And it's really cool that you get a few places to hang this off of. So I'm really digging that effect. From here, let's go ahead and look at the figure. Now, as I did show off the multiple heads, you know what the head sculpt looks like. So just looking down the figure a little bit, I will say... We get completely new sculpting here, as far as I can tell. I don't think there's any reuse going on. He's got his tattered clothes, the uh, shoulder armor here, you know, down to the fabric-wrapped boots. Just looks very good, very accurate to what the game looks like. And uh, I'm, I'm really digging this a lot. So his shoulder armor is a rubber overlay, which is nice. And then from there, it's mostly bodysuit, a bunch of tatters in it. You know, he's lost this sleeve from here down. It's all kind of ripped up there. Um, not really digging the blood effects so much. It just looks like just kind of random red slap-on paint. You, know, you get a little bit on the shoulder there, and then you get a ton going down the arm here. I'm not really, not really huge on that. I just wish it wasn't like Crayola red. I wish they'd have gone for a different shade or made it a little more subtle. I mean, it's almost something where like less is more than what they've done. But everything else is pretty good. Um, I like the tatters. And then here, you see under this like wrap, he is wearing a, like a silver-colored gauntlet, which is really cool. Obviously, that's like a communicator, and there's push buttons and stuff. Um, looking down, as mentioned, there's a ton of saber peg holes on this big multi-strap belt system he's got going on. A little bit of green to gray fade on the front of the like comma thing he's got going. And... Uh, green wraps around brown boots just a really really cool looking figure i will say so also if you look here there's no cut on the upper thigh this is a figure that doesn't have thigh swivel i'm honestly digging that approach it looks a lot better than having the thigh swivel especially because you have that knee twist so i'm really digging that so let's go ahead and run through some articulation ah and as i knock him over he does feature your double barbell neck allowing you to look that far up that far down, 
rotate and pivot. Arms come up to a T pose where he has a butterfly joint, 360 at the shoulder, single jointed elbows that go past 90 and rotate. Let me see. Yeah, they both go past 90. Sometimes it won't quite match because he's got like skin here and then like heavy wrapping here, but they both go past 90 and swivel. 360 at the wrist. The hands have varying hinges as I showed off. Features a mid torso ball joint allowing them to crunch that far forward, that far back, and some side to side and pivot. His legs come out to a true T pose, like a true, you know, like 180. And then his legs can kick that far forward. Not much back. No upper thigh rotation, but you get a little bit of twist on the ball. Single jointed knees can go past 90, rotate at the knee, and then the feet can point basically straight down. A little bit forward, and there's a forward facing pin for rocker, allowing you to get some pretty decently wide stances with both feet flat on the ground. To do a few size comparisons, and there's actually a decent amount of figures here to bring in, so I might just put it all the way to the back. So I will bring in one of the stormtroopers that come in the set, just to give you an idea. They both stand at about a six inch standard height. Here is, I've elected to use, because I think it's the best Vader they've made, the Empire Strikes Back Vader. Although I hear that the Return of the Jedi retro card one might topple that, which is nice. From there, you might be shocked. It took me a moment to realize that we've actually gotten a fair few Force Unleashed figures before. Um, we've gotten the Gaming Greats Stormtrooper Commander and the Shadow Stormtrooper. Now, these are on the old Stormtrooper body, but they are still good additions to the collection if you don't have them. We have the Senate Guard, which is basically just a Royal Guard in blue without the cloak with a lightsaber pike. And then we have the Shadow Guard, which is just a black Royal Guard with a lightsaber pike. So yeah, I mean, the Stormtrooper, the white one, I guess are calling Force Unleashed because it's in the set Vader's Empire, but the rest of these are all from Force Unleashed 1. I mean, that's that's really cool that we have this many, you know, characters. And I say characters are really just trooper types. But like, if you've been collecting for a bit, you probably have a few different troopers from this game to pose a Starkiller fighting, not just your stock white Stormtroopers. So all in all, this is pretty cool. So, end of the day, what do I think of this Hasbro PulseCon exclusive? I love it. I gotta say, a lot of these effect pieces are never gonna make their way to my shelf. There's a lot of extra fluff in here, but some of these pieces really do it for me. These blade swoosh effects, the swappable blades to get different colors from in the game, the swappable hands are nice. I will say, you know, things like this force push hand don't really do it for me. The two alternate heads are rough. I'll say I'll say it very openly. They are not that great. Um, but the stormtroopers provide some value here. I'm always happy to add a few more stormtroopers to the collection. And I'm just looking at it. I'm I'm happy. You know, this is a this is a pretty decent value. I gotta say, breaking things down because there's been people saying, oh, it's way too expensive. And you know, maybe it ain't the cheapest thing. It was hundred and ten dollars. Stormtroopers go for 25 bucks each. That's standard retail of a figure. So that's $50 of the 110 are just in the Stormtroopers. So from there, you have to say, is Starkiller worth 60 bucks? Well, a build-up pack is $45 and doesn't have as many things as come with Starkiller. Starkiller has more things. So you could say that Starkiller's probably worth a little bit more than $45, and then you get the super special packaging and everything here. I gotta say, it's a pretty smack-on-the-nose value. I had sticker shock when I first heard it, too. But... Looking at it now, I think it's a good value for one time. So I'm I'm happy with it. I think you'll be happy with it too. Now, if you decide to wait, because there is rumors that there's going to be a gaming great single pack, and there's never been a convention figure that never got issued outside of the convention or hasn't been made readily available. So like I'm calling it Starkiller will come to the gaming greats, but I'm guessing that he's going to have the lightsaber holding hands the lightsaber hilt, the single blade, not the swoosh blade, and no swappable heads, and none of these blast effects. So no lightning hands, none of it. So like, if you need a Star Killer on the shelf and you don't care about all the other accessories, I think you're going to get your shot. Um, something that might be nice too is getting this set and then also getting the eventual single pack Star Killer because 
I might decide that I want to have a red blade and a blue blade and maybe one of them with lightning hands. I might decide to have two or three star killers on the shelf. So that's a good way to get a few different bodies. Maybe they'll revise the paint on the standard pack, you know, a little bit to make it a little more palatable, you know, change the hair fade and make the face look a little better. You know, I mean, there, there's things that they could revise and change going on. So, like, do I recommend this pack? Absolutely. I also understand if it's not for you. So it's it's a good set. I'm happy I have it. It's a great addition to my collection. And all I can say is it's it's not a bad value. Everything you get here is pretty good, and I'm happy I got it. And maybe you'll be too. So I'm going to go. Thanks a lot for watching. It means a lot that you did. If you enjoyed, you should leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that end of video stuff. And I will catch you next time. Until then, may the Force be with each and every one of you. Bye. <laughs>